So we started making predictions back in 2002, and we based those predictions not on extrapolating current trends, but on looking at who's out there, how they could profit, how they could benefit from a cyber attack, what their capabilities are, and things like that. And we feed those into what's essentially an economic model, even though it doesn't necessarily involve money. And this has been an extraordinarily powerful tool for anticipating what's coming. So what were the specific predictions you made about today and uh, how good or bad were those predictions? We've pretty much called every major new development in cybersecurity since 2002 without missing one. We've been lucky, we've had a hot streak. We don't know quite why we've been as successful as we are, but clearly it hasn't just been luck. Clearly it's, it's largely because of the kind of models we're using. The first really big large-scale prediction I made was in 2002. I said that the days of mass disruption viruses created by teenagers were a thing of the past, that what we had to worry about now was organized crime systematically going after customer account information, and that people just shouldn't be talking about mass disruption viruses much anymore. Immediately after that, we were hit by blaster and slammer and the worst mass disruption viruses ever, and people, people ridiculed me. They said I'd made the stupidest prediction in the history of, of technology. Two and a half years later, I couldn't get any credit for that prediction because organized crime moving into cyber tax looked obvious to everybody. They couldn't believe they needed Scott Borg to tell them that that was coming because everybody could see it in retrospect. In the meantime, we've made, we've made smaller predictions as well, uh, many of those. I was the person, for instance, who predicted Stuxnet. I predicted all its main features, exactly how it would reach the target, what its exact target was, what it would do to that target, 14 months before it was found. So we've, we've, made, we've made big ones like the organized crime moving in, we've made specific ones like Stuxnet, and we've done it all based on who's out there, what their capabilities are, how they could benefit it from an attack, and what the targets would look like for them. There's a limit to how much money you can steal by credit card fraud. So as we move forward in time, that, that kind of criminal activity, which is the bulk of the criminal activity we've seen so far, that kind of criminal activity we think will become less important. What we think will replace it eventually are cyber attacks to profit in financial markets. If you can cause, if you can anticipate by stealing information, or better, if you can cause a significant event in a financial market, there's almost always a way to profit by that. You can, for instance, uh, sell a stock short, get somebody to offer over-the-counter put options on the stock, in effect betting that that stock will go down. Then you can do a cyber attack damaging that company, ideally by doing something physical to disrupt its operations, in a, in a serious way, and then as that stock falls, you can reinvest as, it, as on the way down. By using that technique, you can, in principle, multiply your investment by hundreds of times over. If you did that, there would be very little chance of being caught. We still don't know, for example, whether Al-Qaeda profited by shorting airline stocks before 9-11. Somebody did. They did it out of French brokerage firms. But we don't know whether it was somebody speculating in airline stocks that got lucky or if it was Al-Qaeda itself. So if, if somebody carried out the kind of attack I'm worried about, we probably would never be able to figure out who profited. If we were able to figure out who profited, we might be able to send goons or hitmen after them or something, but we probably couldn't prosecute because it's perfectly legal to say, I heard a rumor that this company was going to be hit by a cyber attack so I shorted its stock. So this is the kind of thing we're worried about for the future. And there are many other ways to make profit in financial markets by doing things using cyber attacks. We didn't used to talk about this, but then as time went by, many, many other people got the idea. A TV program a few years ago called Leverage had many episodes devoted to people profiting in this way. So now the idea is out there all over the place and it's beginning to ramp up. So now there's no reason to keep this secret. Now we want to go public and we want to make people aware that this is one of the bad things that's coming.